This is Star Patrol Front. A while ago, we interviewed Mindy Zemrak, who works as the supervising casting producer from Shark Tank. During our conversation, we asked her what her most memorable moment from the show was. Without hesitation, she said that her most memorable moment was the pitch from the founders of Cupboard Pro that left everyone, sharks included, in tears. Cupboard Pro was invented by firefighter and 9-11 first responder Keith Young. He was named a two-time Food Network Chomp champion, and he invented this product to simplify the cooking prep process that always takes way longer than expected. Less time prepping means more time with your family. Before Keith could get some serious traction with his new product, tragedy struck. Keith's wife, Beth, passed away at 47 from breast cancer, and it understandably crushed the whole family. And then, a couple years later, Keith passed away from a 9-11 related cancer, orphaning his three young children. It was their dad's dream to get Cupboard Pro into homes all around the world. So to carry on his legacy, Kaylee, Christian, and Kira all went on Shark Tank seeking an investment to carry on his legacy. But now we're guessing you can see why their pitch had enough raw emotional power to leave the sharks in tears and create one of the most memorable moments in Shark Tank history. In today's episode, we chat with Kaylee and Kira about how they were manifesting the deal moments before making their pitch in front of the sharks, launching the cutting board into Williams Sonoma, and what they've been doing now after this life-changing deal. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Cupboard Pro. Thank you guys for joining. People who don't know, what does your company do? Thanks for having us. Our company is the Cupboard Pro, and it's a cutting board invention, a two-sided cutting board with a meat side and a prep side with a removable cup that inserts into your board. Our dad invented it when I was in high school, and unfortunately, we lost our dad to a 9-11 related cancer in 2018, and my siblings and I took it onto Shark Tank, where we got a deal with all five sharks, and a licensing deal with Williams Sonoma followed that, so you could find the Cupboard Pro in Williams Sonoma's all around the country. It's a pretty amazing story. I'll tell you, we had Mindy from casting, who you guys know, obviously. And we, when we spoke to her on the podcast, it, it was really, we were trying to give, I was trying to save her in Instagram DMs, basically, because apparently she gets DM'd all the time of like, how do I get on the show? And so <laughs> we wanted we wanted to create this episode where we sort of, we tell people how to get on it and what to do in the process. And so hopefully that avoids her from getting all these crazy people to hit her up. And I, at the end of the interview, I had asked her, you know, what were her like in her head, top memories and so not even companies, but just like her best memories. And you guys were, we were number one on the list. Uh, and I think for obvious reasons, it's such an emotional story. How long did your dad tinker with this idea before, you know, before you guys thought it may have been a company or before you thought, you know, we could take this nationwide or what was, what was that journey like? I would say the whole process from the time our dad invented it to getting onto Shark Tank was like a 10 year journey our dad probably started working on it in 2007 2008 and it became just one of his little hobbies where he was carving into boards trying to figure it out he loved to cook he was a chef he wrote his own cookbook cooking with the firehouse chef so he just was like the biggest ball of life and he um kind of just put it on hold when our mom got sick with breast cancer in 2011, 2012, unfortunately, we lost our mom, August of um, 2022. And after that, our dad was asked to be on Chopped. And that kind of gave him the confidence to pursue the Cupboard Pro again. So we really started to get into it, had our prototypes made, had everything shipped from China in December of 2015. And that same month, he found out that he had a 9-11 related cancer. So once again, everything kind of got kind of got put on hold. Um, he really fought his cancer head on. But as he was doing that, he still was applying to Shark Tank. He took his interview video. Um, but because he didn't have any sales at the time, he didn't get onto the show. And um, we lost our dad in March of 2018. And I'll never forget, it was the night before my dad's one month anniversary. I'm sitting in class in college and I get an email and it's from Mindy saying that she heard our story and if we'd like to apply to Shark Tank. 
so then that started the whole process. And three months after our dad passed away, we were sitting, standing in front of all the sharks. That's incredible. And so gut, gut wrenching at the same time. I lost my father when I was young. And in some way, when I hear your story, the legacy piece is so inspiring to some extent where it's like this thing that you guys probably saw your dad tinkering with for so long, it could take on a life of its own in a different way and provide like this amazing reminder any reminder is a nice reminder, but it can be just a, 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 something that you could all rally behind also. Mm -hmm. um, but I can imagine that's also probably, and maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, but for you guys, incredibly difficult uh, to like have to take over a business or take over an idea and then go on Shark Tank and, and share such a personal story. What, what was that like for you guys? Unfortunately, I guess I had some experience in just taking over a business after um, parent passing. When my mom passed away, I was 19 and I left college to continue her dance studio and Pilates studio full time. So I did that for seven years and it just makes me laugh because every time she says that she's 19, I picture myself having to take over a business like by myself <laughs> at 19. Why did that work to me? Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> if uh, I was alone, that's whack. <laughs> Kira's 20, just turned 20. So I was her age. Yeah. <laughs> teaching crazy Pilates dance class. Yeah, it's wild when I say that and I look at Kira, I'm like, that was me 10 years ago. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And then, did anything need to be finished before you guys went on Shark Tank as it relates to the product or did you already have it? And all you had to do, like you had the website, were you guys selling it prior to Shark Tank? So prior to Shark Tank and prior to like my dad getting sick, when I was in high school, he went to like the Chicago cooking, like kitchen convention, and I would go to those with him. So he just like always had me a part of the process. I was the one making his website for him, his logos. So I was kind of like really a part of it with him throughout high school, which was really cool. He never like didn't include us in all the things he was doing. And then when my dad was sick, even when he was laying in bed on hospice, he'd be like, Keely, I just got an order on Amazon. Like, can you run it to UPS? And I would be taking it to UPS for him, sending it out. And then after he passed, it was just something that was too good not to continue his legacy. Um, we saw how much work he put into that and it was his dream to take it on to Shark Tank. So it was really cool to be able to do that. Yeah, and then walk us through, so you get on Shark Tank and the most amazing thing of all time happens, or I guess the, the craziest thing happens. Did you have any, uh, I can't even imagine. Let's talk about, let's just, in a world where you're going on Shark Tank and are you guys thinking in your head, we'd like to get a specific shark? You know, you have a favorite. Do, is there someone you're specifically targeting that you think can take this product to the next level? So you actually only find out who your sharks are, like pretty much. Yeah. I feel like it, it feels like 24 hours yeah. or like 48 hours before you're pitching. Um, and I remember we were, me and my brother and my sister were getting ready in our trailer and I start writing thank you notes. To Wait, that was so weird. <laughs> I forgot about that. I start writing thank you notes to each one of the sharks to leave a cutting, they're filming all day and to leave a cutting board in their trailer. And my brother says to me, like, what are you doing? We are only going to get a deal. If we get a deal, it'll only be from one. I'm like, I'm just putting it out <laughs> there and saying thank you to all of them now. So I, my mom was like a big believer in like just really like visualizing what you want. Mm -hmm. And then like that energy comes back to you. That's yeah. amazing. That's actually pretty amazing. It was pretty cool. Okay. So no favorites. You're writing thank you cards to them. Mm -hmm. And then you get on the show. Yeah. And everyone's in tears. Yeah. We're standing there and... It was wild. They asked us to step out for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Kira's 14 at the time and she's <laughs> I was like rapping and like singing, but they obviously didn't put that in. But I was like, what's going on? What's <laughs> going on? Yeah, it was definitely nerve-wracking because you don't know like what they're talking about. If they're saying like these kids are young, they're going through a hard time right now, maybe it's too different. Like you have no idea what they're talking about. But they said like the camera crew never like they didn't ever have 
um, an entrepreneur on set and then the sharks asked them to leave. So they weren't really like, they didn't think that we would <laughs> be asked to leave. So it was kind of just a really crazy experience. And I don't know, like just standing there in front of the sharks, like in that moment, like it wasn't something that felt like scary or just when you're standing there for like 10 seconds before they tell you you can speak, you're like, uh. Yeah, but just the overall experience was really yeah, was incredible. Really cool. And they just, you could just feel their like heartfelt um, emotions for us. And it was just, it felt like a very safe environment for us to be able to share a story and to be able to have like our dad's audition tape play with yeah, his voice, really- like booming yeah, that, was insane. that was we we didn't even know that was a part of our pitch they just mm-hmm. their shark tank had it and they added to it so it was kind of wild really hearing our dad's voice mm-hmm. like he was in the room no it really was it was booming and I never like not that I I've seen that video before but I've never like teared up but that like fully blasting in front like and you're just like oh my god this is crazy and yeah. the emotion just hit because we were not expecting that to yeah. play like that wasn't a part of us like practicing or anything so when they were playing that um it was pretty pretty crazy mm-hmm. yeah I can imagine that being unbelievably emotional especially I imagine it's loud oh my goodness it's the last thing you're expecting I think that that part of it was honestly like the most like shocking to really feel like our dad was in the room with us mm-hmm. and a part of the pitch which was cool and because wasn't that the literal video that like he sent that in for his yes. audition? Yeah. So, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, and it was Father's Day weekend also that we were there. So it was, it was a lot of emotions, but that's the one thing Mindy mentioned. She's like, it just felt like the universe stopped in some way, where it was like a th- the Father's Day thing got to you know, it was like all the elements were there. Yeah. Like, I guess maybe your dad was there. You know, like some some real crazy energy. I just getting her email the night before his one month anniversary it just felt like a sign just because like in the beginning especially too like anniversaries just hit you different and when it's like a month you're like how how did this happen but when you got when we received an email like that it kind of gave you like hope and they're still here things are happening and we're going to be okay so that's all because of Mindy so we love Mindy She's Way more than she could ever love us. <laughs> she really is the best. And I think what I love about her is I don't think she knows how, how much of the best she is. Like, I'm like, you're like the coolest person. I don't think, she is. you know, for her, she's just like having fun and doing her job. And, you know, she just likes it. But I'm like, no, I think you're a legend. And she's like, oh, am I? You know, it's funny. the one that's changing lives. It's her. <laughs> yeah, totally. How long after year you guys were on did it air? Did the show actually air? We filmed in June and it oh, no. aired in October. And then what happens then? And and prior to that, are you guys sort of ramping up? I know you don't always know if it's going to air or not, but there's maybe some window. And so what happens after after you guys air? So we sold out of all of our inventory, right? Yeah, when the episode aired, we sold out of all our inventory. And right before our episode aired, um, Damon connected us with William Sonoma his team was working really hard on that connection. So before it aired, we started conversations with them about the possibility of a licensing deal. So when you're doing that too, you can't go and have your own boards produced. So we were just taking what our inventory was from when our dad was alive, seeing what the response was. You also kind of get your investment from the sharks right before the show air. So it's not something that like you now have right after your pitch and there's all this diligence. They're making sure your business is legit, but yeah, William Sonoma, we were so grateful to be able to have that opportunity with them. My dad also brought his cutting board in the past to a William Sonoma store to see how he could get it in. William Sonoma connected us with their manufacturer Epicurean and now our cutting boards made in America. And it definitely took the pressure off me, Christian and Kira a little bit, having that support from William Sonoma, because just after um, continuing my mom's Pilates studio, I saw how much I, like I myself put myself in her shoes where I 
like left college and I'm so grateful that I did that, but to be able to do something to continue our parents' legacy and not have to fully yeah, so like your own thing. make Kira like really take out a um, leave high school or college to focus on this, put that pressure on my brother. Like everyone can follow their own dreams while we continue our dads. On your own. Cool. Yeah. That is really cool. And how did you guys divvy up roles? Like who did what, or was it just like constant chaos and you guys are just doing whatever you can? I feel like we all kind of just, whatever our strengths were <laughs> went with that, but <laughs> I let Kira be a cheerleader in high school. Like I didn't want to put that pressure on my siblings. So whatever I could do, like they're, so, we're all so supportive of each other and whatever they want to be a part of, they're a part of, but I know how hard it is to you being 14. Like, yeah, yeah. you're so young. Yeah. <laughs> I would like here to do some social media. Yeah. Things, yeah. That but... was mine. Me being online, just cutting up some things, talking to all the people and joining. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be like, don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's been fun. I feel like it's just been something that keeps us close and we have something great to work towards work for and to be able to continue our debts like to see with it is pretty beautiful and what happened in the local community anything did once you guys were on tv did they just like rally behind you guys in a real way like what what kind of what did you just see locally um i'd have to say that our whole town really rallied behind us for years before that yeah. with like our mom fighting cancer um we had fundraisers for her and the whole town really like so much love and support our town's very close and when shark tank aired we actually had um our viewing party, viewing at, party yeah at the middle school and high school and we added a whole fundraiser for someone who was fighting um, breast cancer at the time where proceeds from that event went to her so it was pretty special to be able to continue doing good things um in all different ways that's amazing and where, where is the company at today what do you, where's Cupboard Pro today? So today, Cupboard Pro is one of William Sonoma's um, number one selling cutting boards. We still have the licensing deal with them. We recreated our dad's cookbook and they sell our dad's cookbook as well. And we have all new accessories and different things uh, in the works now to hopefully be out next year. That's, that's amazing. Cool. And what are you guys all working on personally? Are you, are you still at the Pilates studio, dance studio? What are you working on? So I sold my mom's Pilates studio in January of 2020. And I actually graduated from FIT with an interior design degree in 20, December of 2018. So that was a couple months after Shark Tank aired. I ended up going back to school. So I started my own little interior design business. And I have different clients working on different things. I got married in September and I'm actually pregnant with my first child. So, oh, wow. Congrats. Thank you. That's amazing. That's a lot of good things. Yeah. How about you? Thank you. Mine's not as exciting as Kaylee's. <laughs> I'm just still a student at um, the College of Charleston, currently oh, nice. studying business. Charleston's a great place. That's a great place to go to school, I think. Probably one of the, one of the most perfect places to go to school. Yeah, I love visiting her, so yeah. it works out. <laughs> yeah, that's so perfect. And you're studying business, and, and is the hope to keep running the company? Is the hope to start your own business? Do you have, because you've seen it. You've seen it so many different ways, right? And so yeah. it's like, you must have the bug. I mean, definitely keeping uh, the Cupboard Pro alive always and doing whatever we can, but I do want to one day have my own thing because that would just be fun <laughs> and it's special definitely coming like from whatever your passion is and what would it be do you have an idea of what you would start i love the like whole fitness industry and like mindset stuff just all that <laughs> i don't really know exactly what it would sure. be but... and what's your brother doing what is he up to now our brother works at a vet in our hometown so he's there full time and loves working with animals so that's a tough job Good for him. Yeah. yeah. We, we interviewed uh, a vet company that's like, it's called Modern Animal and they're trying to go big. And I had no idea what vets actually deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's, it's pretty brutal, it turns out. And I guess there's a shortage of vets. Like, a, like, a, like in a few years, there's going to be, like the requirement is like a million and there's only going to be like 100,000 or something like that. And wow. so it's, it's, it's like a dying industry and everyone's trying to solve it. So good for him. Kudos to him.
Well, look, I, I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast and at least sharing the follow-up. Any tips for people who are watching, listening on either what to do before the before Shark Tank, what to do after? I love the tip that you gave, which is you you sort of wrote a thank you note, which is I've never heard that. So that's amazing that you just yeah, it's within your personality to do that. But are there any other things that you guys just did, whether it's superstitious or just like lucky or just things you thought of doing uh, prior to the show? Um, before I went on for about two months straight, I watched every possible Shark Tank episode that I could to know what kind of question could be asked, how it could be asked. It was kind of like film study, I feel like, just really putting myself like mentally in that position and how I would respond. So it worked out, <laughs> I guess, because that practice really helped. And to really know everything about your business, the honest answers, and to believe in yourself and your company. Because I feel like if you don't believe in your company, then no one else is going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Are you guys still in touch with any of the sharks? Yes. Um, we actually just filmed an update in November, this past November, with and Lori and Matt were there. And there's a lot of exciting things you said coming from Williams and Sonoma, some new products coming soonish this year, next year? Um, we're probably aiming for a 2024 launch date with all of that, but uh, we're still continuing um, with our Shark Tank deal, 20% of our proceeds go back to a 9-11 related charity um, to support families like ours that have gone through or going through this similar thing. So we continue to be able to donate 20% with our sales, which is really awesome as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Are you guys, are you guys personally involved in that charity as well? It's a charity that my dad really supported. So they helped us a lot. It's called the FDNY Foundation. And just an example of their support when my dad was sick, they would drive him to all of his doctor's appointments from Long Island to New York City at Sloan, which was really helpful because not having, not having our mom there for that was tough. So yeah, they definitely took a lot of pressure off yeah. a lot of different aspects. You guys have been through so much. It's so crazy. How do you, as, as like a soon to be mom, what are you thinking about? What's going on? Are, are you thinking like, I, I think every time I, I'm not a dad yet, but when I think about becoming one, I always think there's going to be so many things I'm going to want to create to make other dads like, cause that's how I'm wired where I'm like, all, yeah. all of a sudden you get, you get to see what's broken. Cause it's like a little child running around breaking everything. And then I'm like, I'm probably going to invent 14 products when I have a child. <laughs> I know I, I get like that too. I don't know. I really just love the way that our parents raised us. It, it was always family first, just treating each other with kindness, love, respect. She already went through the hard part because mm. she adopted me when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, this is my sister child. The baby might be easier. <laughs> oh, Adopting so funny. a high school teenage girl is a lot different than a little newborn baby, I feel like. Yeah, um, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. <laughs> and Kira are 10 years apart. So when I was 10, Kira was like my little doll and I did everything with her. I'm even going to college, like I was home all the time. That was when my mom was sick with breast cancer. So I never actually like left the home and went away. I was commuting when my mom was really sick. And then just after she passed, my dad was a New York City fireman. So I would be the one getting Kira ready at like eight, nine years old after my mom passed away, making her breakfast, bringing her to school. So I've had all the different, <laughs> different ages and experiences with Kira. Well, you guys are still tight knit, which is amazing to see. And you guys can still laugh together and run a business together, which is pretty amazing also. And very rare. And so it's it's super special to see you guys in this light. And, and um, kudos to you to keep your, you. your father's dream going. And um, just tell everyone where they can support you guys, uh, whether it's via follows or just purchase the product, obviously Williams and Sonoma, but tell everyone where they can support. Sure. Um, Williams Sonoma, you can buy the cutting board and cookbook looking at the Firehouse Chef online or in store. And we have our Instagram where you can follow us. Um, we're definitely more active, I would say, on our personal Instagrams. Mine's at Kaylee Young. Mine's at Kira Young. And then... No, hers is Young Kira. Oh, what? Sorry. 
Edit <laughs> at Yon Young Kira. Young Kira. <laughs> and our, erase that. <laughs> and our business Instagram is the Cupboard Pro. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Well, look, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for sharing your story. I had to talk to you guys after Mindy said just such amazing things about her experience with you guys and you guys on the show. And so a big thank you. Thank Thank you. you We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the support and making it to the end of the episode. If you haven't already, please do a review and share the episode with your friends. If you never want to miss a beat on all things entrepreneurship, make sure to follow us on socials for daily content. See you next Tuesday for another great episode.